Okay, tell me what you need to say. <gasps> look at you! Oh my goodness! Wow, look at you looking all shades today. Okay, that's good. Oh, plug in the... Test one, two, three. Okay. Check, check.
Good morning. If you will turn with me in the back of the bulletin, we'll begin our worship with the announcements today. The greeters today were Sharon Zunig and Dee Heppel. This week at First Presbyterian, today we have the ordination and installation of our elders and deacons. The youth group will meet at 6.30 this evening. Friday is chicken pie making with the pie pickup from 4 to 6 p.m. Next Sunday, our guest preacher will be Reverend Chuck McPherson. As you can see by our prayer list, it is quite lengthy. We ask as you start your day that you would hold each of these individuals in your thoughts and prayers. Also, we pray always for the safety and protection of our first responders, our military personnel, and medical personnel. If you would have a prayer concern or update to the list, please call the office. You can also see our weekly record as listed. If you go back a little further, Online Giving Church. You may make online donations with the Give Plus website and mobile app. Go to our website at www.fpresbv.org and check it out. Due to government and Presbyterian guidelines, congregants must keep on their masks and shield at all times. Our worship streams live at facebook.com, firstpresbv, and on youtube.com, First Presbyterian Bell Vernon. We are now on Zoom also. Please give us feedback to help our streams be the best they can be. Also, Parking Lot Church is available, tuned to 91.1 FM, and also any help you can provide is welcome. Due to COVID, we cannot pass the offering plate. The offering plates are located at the front of the chancel on the window seals. Thank you for your faithfulness. Feel free to bring your offering up during the offertory. Mary Kay is donating signed and dedicated copies of her book, Wonders of Wisdom, Thoughts of Hope, to the church. All proceeds for the sale of the book, $13, will go to the church for special projects. Sign up on the clipboard on the windowsill. It, if it is a purchase for someone else, please note the individual's name. Chicken pies. We will be making our chicken pies this Friday, January 15th. Pies are $5 each. Please fill out an order form and place it in the offering plate or call the office to place an order. Pies can be picked up between 4 and 6 on Friday. We are almost at our pie order limit. After that, a wait list will be started. We are still in need of donations of flour and Crisco. Bible study will resume January 19th in person and on Zoom. Are there any other announcements? And that's just a reminder to check the door if you're the last one leaving to make sure the door you're going out is locked. Any other announcements?
Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, so the viewing will be Friday evening from 6 to, um, well, it'll start at 6 o'clock at Billick's. And um, if you want to go together, um, we can make plans through the week. Although I'm going to be on vacation, I'll be in touch with Natalie. And if someone would like to coordinate that for us to go together, I would appreciate someone doing that since I am on vacation. But I will be there for the viewing and um, coordinate. Someone let me know if you will coordinate that with Natalie. And um, the service will be that morning, the next morning, Saturday morning, but it is a private service just for the family. So um, are there any other prayer requests? Yes. So if you didn't hear, Barb, Barb Muscala has been diagnosed with COVID. So we want to keep her in our prayers. Um, someone else, anyone else? Yes, Bill. Okay. You said, what's their name again? The Midas family. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Sharon. Wonderful. So Phil Morrow, if you couldn't hear online, he is doing well, he sounds well, and we're so thankful that God is hearing our prayers. Are there any other prayer requests? Oh, I, I, I wanted to update you on my brother-in-law. Thank you so much for your prayers. They took him off the ventilator. Uh, he still has pneumonia, and he, he doesn't have a fever, though, still on antibiotics, but his congestive heart failure has kicked in. So um, thank you for your prayers for Bob and for Nell Marie and uh, for continuing to pray for them. I, I definitely appreciate it. Let's continue on in worship. if you will join me in the call to worship. The powerful voice of God created all worlds. The same voice calls us to worship. God's strength shakes the wilderness. The same strength is offered to people of faith. Come together to remember your baptism. Gather to celebrate the Spirit's gifts. Please pray with me. In the beginning, O oh God, you fashioned the universe. Each star and planet had its beginning in you. Out of the void you bought light and life. Through eons of creativity, you have acted, and today we are here, inheritors of an amazing process. Tiny specks 
in the limitless reaches of time and space. And you are here waiting to greet us. As you acted in our baptism, you are acting still to make all things new within us and among us. Let your light awaken us and your spirit empower us for faithful living. Amen. Test. Did it work? Can you hear me now? Yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> the uh, receiver got switched off for this little microphone. We are set. And um, those of you who are online, we've now run the sound from the sound system directly into the camera, which is why you can hear us so well online. So thank God for that, that we found little things. And we're having trouble with YouTube because of some changes that YouTube made. Um, I should have mentioned this earlier. Uh, I don't know if it came up yet, but uh, it will be on there um, a little bit later. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We who have received the gift of baptism recognize the need to confess our sins to remind ourselves of our finitude and of God's amazing grace. Will you join me in our prayer? Creator God, you have created us, but we have chosen to go our own way. You have reclaimed us, but we have, by our arrogant attitudes and actions, rejected the claim. You have sent your Holy Spirit to break into our controlled and unimaginative routines, and we have not appreciated that burst of creative energy. We are ready now, ready to admit that our ways are full of dangerous byways. Our mistakes and failures have often come because, in our false pride, we have not listened to you. Save us again by your forgiving love. Amen. A voice from heaven said to Jesus, You are my child, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Jesus Christ passed on that gift to those who dared to follow him. We too 
because of our faith, are beloved children of God, loved, forgiven, and sent on a mission. All who are truly sorry for their sins are relieved of its burden and are recreated in God's image. peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us show one another a sign of God's peace. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And you may be seated. If you will join me in the prayer for illumination. Has water splashed across our face? Awaken us in the morn. May your word awaken us to your presence. Wash us in your wisdom. Bathe us in your goodness. Refresh us with your grace. By the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. The responsive reading today is Psalm 29. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He hurls down hail like crumbs, who can stand before his cold. He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. The Old Testament reading today is Acts 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found... He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not ever heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said... Into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophecies. Altogether, there were 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord.
our gospel reading, <clears throat> excuse me, and I didn't have my microphone turned on for the children's sermon in case you couldn't hear it. Sorry about that. The switch in here, I forget now and then to turn it on and off. Our reading is from the book of Mark, and my Bible is not here. It's okay. Hmm? Oh, yeah, that's the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11, as we recall the baptism of Jesus. <clears throat> and I'll be reading, it'll be a little bit different up there because I'm reading from the New International Version, and that's the New Revised Standard. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came on him, came from heaven, saying, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him into the desert, and he was in the desert forty days, being tempted by Satan. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now there is a story told about a saint, I mean a king, from many years ago in the middle of the 5th century. This king was converted and he was being baptized by St. Patrick. During the rite, um, St. Patrick leaned on his sharp pointed staff and doing so he inadvertently stabbed the king's foot. After the baptism was over, St. Patrick looked down and saw all the blood and he was mortified by what he had done, and he begged the king's forgiveness. Why, he asked the king, did you suffer in silence? The king replied, I thought it was part of the ritual. <laughs> Sometimes we don't understand what's happening, do we, and we just go with it. Baptism and New Year's. Thoughts of birth, beginning, new starts, rebirth. It's a new year, a time to start again, to start over, to make changes in our lives. Now, many of us have made resolutions in the past only to drop them a few days or weeks into the new year. And we are all hoping that our resolution that 2020 is really gone will come about. For many of us, baptism occurred before we were even aware of God's call on our lives. We were baptized at a time when we were not, even an, uh, were not even aware of what was happening. Our lives were just beginning, and it was after the trauma of birth, having left the comfort of our mother's womb to enter a foreign world. For others of us, baptism occurred when we were older, when we recognized God's call on our lives and made a commitment to that new life. And for still others, when we came of age and finished our studies in faith, we confirmed our baptism vows and became members of a church. John the baptizer came. Now literally, the baptizer means John the washer. Hey girls, shh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> He came to preach repentance, to a testimony of repentance, telling the people literally to walk into the water and leave their sins there, to turn around 
and walk away from their sins. And people responded. They stepped into the water to be washed figuratively and actually. And into that experience walked Jesus. <clears throat> did John recognize Jesus? Well, you know, I'm not sure at first whether he did. I mean, they were cousins, so they probably knew each other, saw each other at family gatherings and weddings. I'm sure his parents had told him about Jesus and about the stories of John's birth and how God had called him to be the messenger of the Messiah. So if John didn't recognize Jesus by sight, I'm sure that he recognized him in spirit. Because we remember the story that when Mary came to greet John's mother, and there she was, Elizabeth was pregnant with John, and when Mary approached with the child Jesus in her womb, the baby John leapt in the womb as the spirit quickened him to the presence of the Messiah. So I'm positive he recognized Jesus in one way or another. John's baptism came from... <coughs> Excuse me. John's baptism came from a practice of cleansing ceremonies, much like the priests who would be cleansed and washed before they went into the temple, before they served the Lord. It was a baptism of repentance, but not salvation. Years later, the Apostle Paul was traveling through Asia, passing through Ephesus, preaching the good news and calling people not only to repentance, but to faith in Jesus Christ. And so the Ephesian elders came out to meet Paul. They had learned of John's baptism, and they had received a baptism of repentance, John's baptism, but that was all they knew. They were doing their best to be faithful, but they had never heard of Jesus, the one to whom John's baptism pointed. So Paul explained to them what the reason for John's baptism was, that it pointed to the Messiah, to Jesus Christ. And then they were baptized into Christ as well, in the name of Jesus. What comes after? That's the title of this message, and I'll be asking that question a few times. What comes after baptism, after receiving new life, after doing a 180-degree turn then heading in a new direction. What comes after? We need to be baptized. Not to be saved, but to recognize that God is saving us. That he has chosen to cleanse us. That he has chosen to make us new. We need to be baptized and to remember our baptism so that we recognize that our path is not God's path. Our ways are not God's ways, <clears throat> that we cannot save ourselves. And so we come to God just as the Ephesians did, just as our parents brought us to this baptismal font or one like it. Confessing our sins and our failures, we ask God once again for forgiveness and a new start. And that baptism is only a beginning. What? comes after. You see, Jesus came in to the Jordan. He wasn't baptized for the forgiveness of sin, but as an inauguration and testimony of his ministry. And we are baptized with Jesus' baptism as a symbol of our death to sin and our rising again, our resurrection to new life. What happens after? Today, as we do each feast of the Lord's baptism, and when children and adults are baptized, and when we remember our own baptism, we will, during the ordination and installation, revisit the commitments we made in faith and that we made for our children when they were baptized. We renounce sin and profess our faith in Jesus Christ, pledging to not take God's grace for granted. And as God declared at Jesus' baptism, we are approved of by God because of Jesus' sacrifice and cleansing of our sins. 
what comes after. Jesus went into the wilderness to commune with God and to be tested, to be strengthened for what would come next, to walk with God and to preach the gospel, the good news of the gospel, and to give his life so that all might be forgiven. But we don't always have the resolve that Jesus had, do we? Even after we have repented, even after we have been baptized and repented again and again, we find ourselves sometimes struggling to keep the faith, to do the work to which we have been called. We give up. We turn around. Maybe we go back to our old ways. What comes after? After Jesus came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit fell on Jesus in power and in God's pleasure and strength, preparing him to do the work for which he came. After the Ephesian elders were baptized, then Paul laid his hands on them and prayed, and they too were filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered to do the work to which they were called. So if you've been baptized, I believe you have. Maybe you don't remember it. Maybe you only have the word of your parents or the church roles to tell you that you were. Maybe you made faith commitments at confirmation or you've made them here. Or maybe each week when we say the Apostles' Creed, you make that commitment then. On each Sunday when we repeat that, I have to ask, what comes after? Are we merely stating words, reciting what we have memorized, and I've thrown a stick in the works so that you have to learn it a new way? Are we merely just reciting what we've learned, or are we confessing our faith once again? And when we do that, I have to ask, what comes after? Are we content with a confession of faith, with a religious experience, with a new name, that God put a new name, he gave us a new name, and our name's written down in glory? I won't start singing that song. But are we content with that religious experience, with that new name, but without an ongoing relationship that continually changes us, transforms us, and prepares us for what God has planned for us to do. Are we rather content with being, well, that's just the way I am? Or are we reaching out to God and saying, what more do you have for me? What will you give me so that I can become more like Jesus Christ? What comes after? Today we will ordain a new deacon and a new ruling elder. And we will install the elders and deacons in the class of 2023. We will pray for God's spirit to fill them, to lead them and empower them. But this prayer is for you as well. You see, Jesus didn't die and rise again just to give us a label or an experience. Just to be able to say, I'm a Christian. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, I'm a Christian. Yeah, no. That isn't all that Jesus died for or rose for. He died and rose again to redeem, restore, and transform every one of us. The behaviors that we have carried, the things we have learned that our, our society has taught us that aren't what Jesus would do. WWJD, what would Jesus do? He came, he grew, he died, he rose again and ascended into heaven where he prays for us, just as Paul prayed for the Ephesian elders. And in that prayer, he fulfills his promise that he made to the disciples, said, I will send you a comforter, the paraclete, the one who comes alongside to carry you through so that we need not struggle with our failures and our faults. 
We need not say, well, that's just the way it is. I can't change now. I've been this way all my life. <laughs> no. He gave this to us so that we can be restored and transformed. Jesus sent the Spirit to comfort us, to strengthen us, to lead us, and to guide us. And that gift is not only for those we pray for today, but that gift is for you as well. Just as Peter said on the dais there, when people said, well, they must be drunk up there because they're speaking in all these other languages. And Peter said, no, 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 this is what God had promised. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit on that Pentecost feast day. And being filled with the Spirit, he preached and he said, this gift is to you and to your children and even to those who are afar off. My friends, the promise of Jesus' baptism isn't just that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and God was pleased with him, but the promise and the gift of Jesus' baptism is that as we follow Christ in salvation, in baptism, in new life, we can be filled with his spirit. Not just a one-time filling, because you know, if you fill a cup and you set it up here, and I thought about doing this last week, but I forgot. If you put a cup up here and you leave it sit, you know what's going to happen to it, right? It gets filled with dust. It gets rancid. It might start growing something in it. But if you have that cup and you continually pour more in and it runs over, the water stays fresh because you're putting more in. And that's how the baptism of the Holy Spirit works. God filled us with that spirit. He gave us new life when we confessed our sins. But he seeks to refill us, to change us, and continually make us new if we are willing to receive it. So my prayer today is that you will open your hearts to the blessing of God's spirit to that gift that keeps on giving, that power that will help you discover what comes after. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are sometimes forgiving of others and yet not forgiving of ourselves. When we make mistakes, when we do things in our own way, and then we realize that we have not pleased you. Sometimes we just say, well, I'll just give up. That's just the way it is. Help us to have faith in you that our baptism is not a one-time event, but it's a sign and a symbol of the work that you are doing in us. And that when we commit ourselves to you, when we receive the sacrifice of Jesus Christ anew and afresh each day, walking forward in our faith rather than stagnant. You say to us again, this is my son, this is my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. Amen.
You may be seated. In baptism, <clears throat> excuse me. In baptism, each Christian is called to ministry in Christ's name. God calls some persons, though, from the midst of the congregation to fulfill particular functions so that the ministry of the whole person of God, the whole people of God, may flourish. In ordination, the church sets apart with prayer, with the laying on of hands, those who have been called by God through the voice of the church to serve as deacons and ruling elders. In installation, the church sets in place with prayer those who have been ordained as deacons and ruling elders, and they are now called anew to service in that ministry. The call to ordered ministry in the church is the act of the triune God. This call is evidenced by the movement of the Holy Spirit in the individual conscience, the approval of a community of God's people, and the concurring judgment of a council of the church. To those called to exercise special functions in the church, deacons and ruling elders, God gives suitable gifts for their various duties. In addition to possessing the necessary gifts and abilities, those who undertake particular ministries should be persons of strong faith, dedicated discipleship, and love of Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Their manner of life should be a demonstration of the Christian gospel in the church and in the world. Will our candidates please stand, those who are being um, installed and ordained today, that would be Marguerite Patterson, Dennis Peters, Patty Gillen, Eileen Quinza, who's uh, hopefully with us online, and um, Sharon Zunick, Jane Benary, and Mary Beth Berkeley. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And I answer, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? If so, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of the church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you, uh, do you, and will you? Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be, um, and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity? And will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you with God's help? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? To those of you who are being installed as ruling elders, will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? 
and to our deacons. Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you, with God's help? Questions for the congregation. Do we, the members of a church, except Dennis Peters, Patty Gillen, Marguerite Patterson, Eileen Kunza, as deacons, and Jane Benary, Sharon Zunick, and Mary Beth Berkeley, as ruling elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the ways of Jesus Christ? We do. Do we agree to pray for them? to encourage them, to respect their decisions, to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone as head of the church. If so, respond with I do, I do. Fred, stay up here for a second. Um, uh, let's see, Mary Beth, if you'll come up. Um, and who else is going off? that's here. Um, okay, so I have something for, um, for you guys, and this is for everyone who's going off of session or um, um, deacons at this time. You can all sit down. Thank you. This cup says, you are a blessing, 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, and I hope that as you're going off of deacons and off of session, that you will enjoy using this mug and when you do you will remember how much of a blessing you have been to us in serving in that stead and then i'll get the rest to to, to those who are uh thank you <laughs> um and please on those who to, who have um who have finished their terms, uh, congratulate them and thank them for the work that they have done with us. And now let me get some uh, hand sanitizer here. I'm going to ask for Mary Beth and Patty Gillen to come forward. And you could just stand on either side here so that you're... Because of COVID, we can't do the whole laying on of hands things, but uh, when we, as we pray for them, I would ask that you extend your hands to them, that um, God, we don't have to touch them to uh, pray for them and anoint them. God is the one who anoints. So um, let me pray. And if you'll extend your hands to them as we pray, I would appreciate that. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you have called forth leaders to serve you and equip them with your gifts. Among your people Israel, you anointed prophets, priests, and rulers. You called pastors and teachers, bishops, elders, and deacons to build up your church. With Moses, the 70 elders bore the burdens of your people, ministering in the power of your spirit. Alongside the apostles, deacons cared for all in need and guarded the community's peace. In the church, deacons, elders, and pastors served together so that your whole people might be equipped for ministry and built up into the full unity of Christ. For your servants in every age, O oh God, and for the Church of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise. We pray for Patty Gillen um, being ordained as a deacon. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Patty that she may be a faithful deacon in the church. Give her openness to the Holy Spirit's leading that she may see and serve wherever there is need. Train her in the school of prayer that she may express the compassion of Christ for the poor and the friendless, the sick, the grieving, and the troubled. 
equip her with courage to bear the gospel into the halls of power and to communicate your presence and might among those who are powerless. In everything, give her the mind of Christ who did not grasp at greatness but emptied himself to become a servant of your reign. Give her joy in her walk of faith and a sure sense of your abiding presence for her work in ministry. And we pray for Mary Beth Berkeley. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Mary Beth, that she may be your faithful elder in the church. Give her prudence and sound judgment, wisdom and courage to order the life of the church in obedience to your word. Nourish her in the life of the Holy Spirit that she may exercise the ministry of discipline with humility and compassion. Guide her in governance on this session and in every court of the church that she may be a servant leader following Christ who came not to be served but to serve and to give his life to set others free. Give her joy in their walk of faith and a sure sense of your abiding presence for her work and ministry. Gracious God, through the waters of baptism, you have claimed us as your own and called us to share in Christ's ministry. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may discern the gifts you have given, calling them forth from one another, and together use these gifts for the good of all. In obedience to Christ and in the unity of his spirit, may we proclaim good news, make disciples, be light and leaven, share our bread, offer a cup of cold water, wash one another's feet. Make us strong in Christ to live as your people and show forth your saving love in the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, if those who are coming on, Jane and Sharon and Dennis and Marguerite, if you'll stand once again. Sorry, Dennis. <laughs> and, um, and those who are at home are standing in spirit. Mary Beth and Patty, you are now an elder and a deacon in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. All of you who have been installed today, hear the words of Hebrews 12, 1 through 4 and 12 through 14. Therefore, since we are surrounded so by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings to us so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet. For that is what, for that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with everyone and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. For each of our oncoming elders and deacons, I have this pen. It says, be still and know that I am God. And then there are some encouragements on the back, on the bookmark and the pen. As you do your work, remember that you're doing this work in God's strength, in God's power and not in your own. And when you feel weak, maybe fall to your knees and let him know, I need your help. There you go. You are now elders and deacons of First Presbyterian Church. Thank you. You may be seated. And you're welcome.
Thank you. Oh, Marguerite. I was going to come around that way. I didn't see. <laughs> hmm? Let us join together in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in... <clears throat> sorry. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For those of you who were ordained, and installed today, I have additional copies of the service if you want a copy of it for, for your remembrance. You can pick it up after the service. Let us now take our needs to the Lord in prayer. Will you join me in spirit as I lead us? Heavenly Father, God of mercy and grace, we are so thankful we're thankful that you have called us to faith, that in spite of our rebellion, in spite of our choices, in spite of our weaknesses, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, who lived as we live and yet did not sin, and who gave his life as payment for ours. In his name we come to you, and we lift up these whose names have been mentioned we especially pray for our sister, Lorraine. We especially pray for the family of our brother, George. We pray for this family um, who have lost, who we thank you that they're doing better from COVID and pray that you would continue to give them complete healing. We pray for families who have lost loved ones who are trying to figure out the way to go forward, give them comfort and strength. We pray for those who are struggling physically, that you would be their ever-present help. Carry them through where they are going, Lord, and help them to know that you walk with them. Lord God, we lift up all of our brothers and sisters in faith throughout this world, especially those who are persecuted for their faith. Help them to shine the love of Jesus Christ rather than themselves so that others may see and believe. We pray for our, our first responders, for our military, for EMTs, for medical personnel. Oh God, you are able to meet them where they are, and we pray that you would be their help. We pray that you would give them guidance, and we pray especially that you would give them healing of minds and of body. We pray for our government and for our country, that you would bring peace, that you would help us to love one another, that you would help us to bring light into the melee that it has become. Help us to be your light. We thank you for all these things, and we pray in the words your son Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. if you will join me in the prayer of the church. Day by day, dear Lord, 
of these three things we pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. In thanksgiving for all we have received, we enlist in the ministry Christ demonstrated and inspired. We have nothing apart from God's gifts. We have everything when we allow God's spirit to work through us. This offering demonstrates the depth of our awareness. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Will you join me in the prayer of dedication? Mighty God, you have given us everything we have. You have granted us life. You have poured out abiding love on our behalf. You have made us rich. We share out of this awareness and because we care about people who do not know you, people who have not shared your abundance, people who have defied your commandments, people who need your love. Bless our gifts to do the work you intend. Amen. God gives strength to those who will receive it. God will bless the people with peace. Listen to the majesty of God's voice calling you. Glorify God's name in your work and worship. Then go out as a new creation in Christ. Let others see how God is changing you.
Now go in peace from this place, knowing that you are loved, knowing that God approves of you, and knowing that he will carry you through in any situation and any time. May you be filled with God's love and power and strength as you go through this week. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Make sure I make sure I turn this off.